Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. Uh, and this week we're actually going to be showing you guys how to, I wouldn't say properly, but just another option of how to introduce Coraline into your reef tank. If you guys know, we all look for Coraline in a reef tank just because Coraline really once it starts growing it tells you your tank is very very stable and all in all just really gives for a great look in the tank i'm sure we've all seen uh, those purple pinkish shades on the rock on the back on the glass and that's really what we're all looking for so one of the ways to introduce coralline uh, there's various additives out there there's a, a few products that are you know people recommend some say they're good some say they're bad some say they don't work who knows Obviously, you can introduce it by introducing corals that have coralline on the frag plug, snails that have coralline on their shells, anything of that sort. Obviously, a rock as well that had coralline, that would also help you. One of the methods I'm going to be doing in this tank is something very new, something I've actually viewed online. It's a method that really made sense. It's very natural. It's kind of like you acting as if you're the parrotfish in the wild. Parrotfish, they move a lot of stuff through the oceans, coralline being one of them because they chomp it down, they bite it. As they're swimming, they're chewing it, chewing it. So guess what's happening? The particles are falling in different parts of the rock in the ocean. So in essence, what we're gonna do today is kind of try to replicate as best we can the parrotfish and what they do in the natural to obviously introduce coralline into the reef tank. So once we do have obviously your coralline that you've gathered from a good source that you're not worried about any pests, um, because that's gonna be a key point. If you obviously get coralline from someone that you don't trust or a tank that you don't trust it can potentially introduce pests obviously it's pretty difficult for something to latch onto here but we're still uh, going to dip it so i'm going to use uh, what i always like using which is the polyp lab uh, reef primer got my little syringe here kind of just stir it up i've already gotten some water from the tank and it's been sitting here for a little bit uh, now when dipping it what we're going to want to do we're going to uh, want to grab the coralline Put it in there for about four or five minutes uh, while we're mixing it and while we're you know making some flow in there so if there is anything obviously it can fly off and we're not worried about introducing it here into the tank been mixing it for a little bit also spraying it to try to get as many particles up you can see them all suspended so what i'll do you don't have to do this i just do it i'm gonna get a little bit more uh, water not too much just a little bit more that should be enough. And I'm actually gonna make a little bit more of this dip solution, if I can open it. So I, I'm gonna make a little bit more. This time around, you don't need too much. And I'll, what I'll do, I'll dip it about two minutes in here. And then about, you know, three minutes in this one. And that'll just ensure that the, if there is any pests that did come off, I'm able to slowly dilute the pest in the water or whatever's in the water um, and then the, at the end i empty this one out i rinse it and i get another batch of water with no dip in it whatsoever and just inspect it to make sure obviously everything's uh, come off of it this is the second uh, dip here for the last three minutes and then lastly we have the uh, water i already rinsed out the previous dip got some water freshly from the tank in here and then that'll be the last dip so again you don't need to do this just this is how i want to do it i actually found some bristle starfish on it which isn't you know some people consider them bad some don't i can honestly care less um it didn't seem i don't think the dips will kill them instantly it may shock them but so after this what we're going to have to do i think there's a starfish no you can maybe see the starfish in here Oh, there it is right there. There it is. See the starfish right here? I'm gonna leave it in the dip. If that accidentally did get out into the tank, it wouldn't, in my opinion, wouldn't be the end of the world. So after this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crunch these up. The lights are here, I know. Yeah. I'm gonna crunch all these up uh, into really, really, really fine particles or as fine as I can get them. So hopefully the spores release and then what i'm gonna do is just drop it all in the tank putting everything to as fine of a dust as i can get it obviously i'm not gonna be able to get it super fine i'm just using the tongs these are actually some really long long tongs here so i'm just trying to crush it as small as i can and the reason i do this you don't need to do this but what you're going to do you're going to allow for the spores Again, coralline is, is an algae. 
So it does release spores. You're going to allow by crushing into fine particles for the spores to have a better chance of grabbing on to whatever it is, whether the rock, the sand, or the background. Obviously, you're going to give them a better chance to grab on and to start propagating. Pretty happy how fine the particles are here. So really, the next step is as easy as it's going to sound. It's literally dumping all these spores and all this coralline algae right into the tank. I feel this is going to give us the best way and I guess the more natural way to um, introduce coralline into the tank. So here we go. There it is. The fish are trying to eat it. <laughs> I wonder how it tastes. You see that? Look at all those fine, tiny little spore particles. Think, oh crap, there's a whole mess in here still. So another thing I want to do now, actually all this that's left in here, is I'm going to shut off all the flow and only drop it on the rock. Again, that's going to give it the highest chance to obviously start propagating on the rock. So we're going to shut off the skimmer. Shut off this bad boy. What we can then do is literally drop it all You'll see here. And there's still more in there. Look at that. The fish is trying to eat it. Yeah, they're going to try to eat it. But I wonder what it tastes. They think it's food. Look at all that. They're falling all over the rock. I'll probably leave the returns off for about an hour or so. They're still flowing in the tank. This uh, Nero 5 is still operating. But look at that, there's spores all in the water. And we'll just set that down. So that's going to be the main method I recommend to seed your tank with coralline algae. Obviously there's various methods. There's supplemental methods, if that's even a word. There's supplements you can add to have it come in quicker. Obviously you can do it the natural way just by bringing a frag plug or getting a snail or a hermit crab that has coralline eventually it will propagate. Coralline is one of those algaes that actually take a really long time. No, I wouldn't say really long time. They just take a long time to, to grow and to, and to really reproduce in a tank. This is gonna give you the, I can even still see them floating. I don't know if you can see the particles. Uh, but anyways, this is gonna give it the highest chance to grab onto something. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's more than enough big chunks on the rock, like tons of them all over the rock. Yeah, this is gonna be what I recommend. Like I said, if you do do it this way, be careful that you're getting it from a very, very trusted source. Uh, Cause last thing you want to do is to introduce pests, you know, when you're trying to introduce uh, coralline algae. Make sure it's from someone you recommend. Uh, dipping it, I recommend dipping it. I don't know if that's really necessary or not. I don't believe it hurts the coralline at all. Um, it is a type of algae, so it shouldn't hurt the, um, the coralline, but if there is any pest or anything of the sort on it, it should make it disappear. Luckily, I actually looked at the water. It was pretty clear. I didn't see any pest come off, so uh, that is a good sign. So guys, we're going to leave this video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a quick video, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be very useful, especially for you guys starting a new reef tank. This will hopefully be another method, more importantly, a natural method to introduce coralline into your reef tank. I thank you each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.